In this video, I'm going to talk about the properties of exponents. I'm actually going to do um, about five examples of the different properties of exponents just to give, because uh, with exponents, there's a lot of different variability that we can have. So I'm just going to go through a few examples. Uh, this should be pretty quick. This should be a pretty quick video, um, uh, but hopefully I'll be able to show you enough examples so we have a better understanding of what's going on. Okay, so my first example is something pretty basic. Uh, what if I have uh, three to the negative second? Okay, now if, the, if, I have a pro if this is part of a problem, I might be asked to simplify this, I might be asked to evaluate this, something to that effect. Okay, so what I, the first thing that I notice is that this is a negative exponent. Remember, negative exponents make fractions. Negative me exponents make fractions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a fraction out of this. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this position and put it on the bottom of the fraction. This right now is on top of the fraction. If you need to put a bar right there to see that it's on top, just take this and put it to the bottom. When you do that, we go from a negative two exponent to a positive two exponent. Okay. And then from there, once I have changed the position, once I have made the exponent positive, I now need to evaluate this. One on top, three squared on bottom is nine. Okay, so there's a simple example uh, just with negative exponents. Okay, so let's do another quick example. Uh, what if I have a fraction? Fractions can sometimes be a little bit, a little bit more difficult. There's a couple of different ways to look at this one. Uh, I will try to show you the simplest way. Uh, so what I'm going to do, since I see this negative exponent, this negative exponent is being applied to both of these numbers. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this negative exponent and apply it to the 2, negative 2, and apply it to the 3, so it looks a little bit like this. 2 to the negative 2 over 3 to the negative 2. Okay, now this problem's a little bit confusing because notice now we have a negative exponent in the bottom of the fraction. So what I'm going to do is, just like the top example, I'm going to change its position so that uh, we have positive exponents. So on this first example up here, on this first example up here, it was on top and I brought it to the bottom, which was fine. But now here, some are on top, some are on bottom. So all I need to do now is just simply change its position. So if this is two to the negative second, it's on top, I'm gonna to take it to the bottom. This three here, three to the negative second, it's on the bottom, I'm gonna change its position and bring it to the top. Okay, once I change its position, the exponents actually become positive. Okay, once I change position, the exponents become positive. Now, after I have, now that I have positive exponents, now I can actually evaluate the Exponent, this will be 3 squared is 9, 2 squared is 4, so that would be simply 9 fourths. Okay, that's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it, uh, if I can do this rather quickly. You can also think of it this way. If I take the fraction and flip it initially, if I take the fraction and just flip it initially, that actually will change the exponent outside to be go from a negative 2 to a positive 2. This is another way to do this. And then all you simply need to do is take this exponent of 2 and apply it to the numbers inside. So 3 squared is 9 and 2 squared is 4. That's another way to look at it. I just wanted to really quickly go over that. Okay, so those are two examples of, of using exponents. Let's go through a couple more. Uh, here's another one. This is kind of a long-winded one. 3z to the seventh times negative 4z to the second. Okay, now I got numbers, I got variables, I got exponents, I got all sorts of stuff in here. Uh, my, my advice to you is just look at one thing at a time. So the first thing I want to look at is I'm going to look at the 3 and the negative 4. Those are numbers. These are constants. They're just numbers. So actually I'm going to figure that out first. So 3 times negative 4 is just going to be a negative 12. Okay, so I've evaluated the number portion of this first. Okay, now what I have here is z to the seventh and z squared. These z's are multiplying times one another. So go look at your um, property, your power, or excuse me, your product property. If I'm multiplying like bases, I need to add the exponents. Multiplying like bases, add the exponents. So this is going to be z to the ninth power. 7 plus 2 gives me 9. Okay, so that's what that would simplify to. Again, when you look at something like this, don't, don't get uh, overwhelmed by everything that's going on. Just take one thing at a time. All right, uh, especially for this next one, if I have y, z to the third over z to the fifth, 
quantity third. Okay, so this is a different type of example. Again, a lot of stuff going on, but again, take one thing at a time and you'll do just fine. So as I look at this, one thing that I notice is that inside the parentheses, I see a Z on bottom and a Z on top. I'm going to evaluate that first, and then I'm going to worry about the three exponent outside first, or next. Okay, so Y's, I only see one Y, so that, that doesn't, isn't affected. I see Z on top, Z on bottom. I see three Z's on top, five Z's on bottom. So if I'm dividing like bases, subtract the exponents. This is going to be Y to the... Uh, This is one way to explain it. I'm actually going to change this up here in just a second. Okay, so if I take 3 minus 5, I get a negative 2. But there's kind of another way to explain this that might be a little bit easier. I like to think of it this way. I have 3 z's on top, 5 z's on bottom. They're going to cancel so that I only have 2 left on the bottom. Now notice this is z to the negative second. If I have a negative exponent, what I need to do with this is take this and put that on the bottom. So notice z to the third, z to the fifth, three on top, five on bottom. They're gonna cancel, so I have two left on the bottom. I think that's kind of a simpler way to look at it. Yes, you can have a z to the negative second in there, but I, I would prefer that we have it this way. All right, now that we've evaluated with the z, now let's take a look at the three. I'm gonna take that three and apply it to everything inside. Y to the third z squared to the third, z squared to the third, squared to the third. This is a power of a power property that I'm going to use here. If I'm taking the power of a power, power of a power, I need to multiply the exponents. So that 2 and 3, I actually multiply together to get 6. Okay, that one's a little bit tough. There's a lot of properties that are intermixed into um, into a problem like that, and there's a lot of different ways to do it. Uh, the, only, the only real good way of, of understanding these problems is to practice them over and over again. Um, practice and a little bit of experience will get you to understand these a little bit better. Okay, last example that I want to go with um, is having to use scientific notation. 4.5 times 10 to the negative fifth over 1.5 times 10 to the sixth. Okay, now in mathematics, um, one place that we that is that this is that this is used in the real world is in astronomy or even chemistry, uh, where you use very very large numbers. In astronomy, you use very very large numbers, light years di uh, distance the, the the moon is from the Earth. These are very very large numbers. Um, and in chemistry, you use very very small numbers, the size of an atom, um, things like that. Uh, so what I'm going to show you just real quick uh, using scientific notation, using the property of exponents to evaluate something like this. Okay, so now this looks kind of confusing and you might try to plug this into a calculator, but it's really very messy if you try to do that. So we're going to evaluate this uh, using our property of exponents. Now this right here, 4.5 over 1.5, I can actually divide that. And then these over here, notice base of 10, base of 10, this is just going to be like the other problems that we've been working with. Okay, but first I'm going to look at 4.5 divided by 1.5. Actually, I'm going to look at that as 45 and 15. 15 goes into 45 three times. So if I put a decimal here, decimal here, 1.5 goes into 45 three times. Okay, so 4.5 divided by 1.5 is actually just three, simply enough. Okay, so now I'm going to look at this part here, and I'm going to use the same rules four exponents. If I have a base of 10 and a base of 10, if I'm dividing, if I'm dividing like bases, I need to subtract the exponents. Negative 5 minus 6. So this is times 10 to the negative 11. Negative 5 minus 6 got me that negative 11. Okay, so there, there's just an example, one example using scientific notation. It's, it's not really that difficult to use scientific notation, but it does help just to have an example uh, so that you've seen one before. And those are five, uh, about five examples uh, for all the properties of exponents.